Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of working with nodes in Blender by using the shader editor. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. The shader editor is one of several node editors in Blender. A node editor is a way to connect operations together to form a network that creates the effect you're looking for. Currently, the main node editors in Blender are the shader editor, the texture node editor, the compositor, and upcoming is the geometry nodes editor. While the nodes that you're connecting may be different in each editor, the overall concept of node editing remains the same. So this video will serve as an intro to node editors by looking at the material editor. So let's add a basic material to an object in order to learn our way around nodes. To get things set up from a default Blender scene, let's delete everything and we're going to add in a Suzanne monkey. We'll press Ctrl2 to add a subdivision surface, right click and shade smooth. Now we have something interesting to look at. From our workspace tabs, choose the shading workspace. You'll notice the shading workspace has several viewports. A 3D viewport for viewing our object, by default set to material preview node, a shader editor window, an image viewer window, a file browser window, a properties window, and an outliner. Before we continue, there's a Blender add-on that in my opinion should be enabled by default, but it isn't. So we're going to enable it really quickly. Go to the edit menu and choose preferences. Make sure the add-ons section is selected and in the search type in node. You'll want to make sure that the node wrangler plugin is enabled. While we're not necessarily going to be going over the node wrangler in this video, you should check it out because the features that it adds to Blender are really invaluable. So now with Suzanne selected, in the shader editor, click the new button to create a new material. When you do this, a couple of things happen. A new material is created with a principled BSDF node and a material output node. The object you selected has a material slot added and the material that was created is placed in that slot. Now an object can have many materials which can be assigned to different faces using different slots. But for this video, we're just gonna have one material on our monkey. You can navigate around a node editor window. You can navigate around a node editor window using your mouse. Middle clicking and holding down will allow you to pan the view and scrolling your mouse wheel will let you zoom in and out. If you've managed to completely lose your nodes off the screen, you can go up to the view menu and say frame all or press the home key on your keyboard and you'll get the same effect. This will bring everything right back to the middle of your screen. The material output node is at the end of our node tree chain. Whatever is plugged into this node in the surface socket will be rendered on the surface of our object. We can also affect the object as a volume or the displacement of our object, which means we can have our material affect the bumpiness of our object. All node editors have at least one type of a final output node that's required for them to work correctly. Now in the node editors, you're going to notice there are dots on either side of a node. The ones on the left side are inputs, and the ones on the right side are outputs. These are all called sockets. In the material editor, green sockets are shader sockets. Shaders are general mathematical functions which describe the way in which light is scattered by a surface. Green sockets are used for editor-specific data. So for instance, in the geometry nodes editor, green sockets represent a geometry socket. So here in the material editor, the default material has a principled BSDF shader plugged into our output. As you'll notice, the principled BSDF shader has a lot of options, and we'll go into those in another video where we more closely dive into creating materials. Just know that we can change all of these settings by changing the sliders in these. So if I want to make my object metallic, I can change this to 1 or 0 to make it non-metallic. I can change how rough the object is or reflective. I can choose if it has a clear coat which is like a layer of polish put on top of the object. So while you can dial up whatever settings you like inside of a node with its controls, you can control the settings of a node 
through its inputs. In all node editors, yellow sockets want a color, gray sockets want a number, and purple sockets want a vector. There are other types of sockets in other editors, like orange for object or light blue for strings, etc. But we'll tackle these as they come up. So let's control the base color of our object using another node. In the editor, Shift A will bring up our add menu. I'll go to the input submenu and choose RGB. This will add an RGB node, which gives me a color picker. To connect it to the principled BSDF, I'll drag from the output socket on the RGB node to the input socket that I want to control on my next node. Now I no longer have control on the principled BSDF node. Instead, the base color is controlled by the output of this node. We can do the same for values. Hitting Shift A, input value, I can connect this value to say our metallic. So now if this is zero, the object is non-metallic. If it's one, the object is metallic. While a single value might work in some cases, other times we want a pattern to drive our settings. That's where texture nodes come in. So let's delete the value node by clicking on it and pressing delete. We're also gonna disconnect the RGB node. Now there's a couple of ways to disconnect a node. The first is by grabbing the end of a connection and pulling it off of the input that it's going into. Undoing that. The second way to get rid of a connection is by holding down control and right click dragging over the connection. This will cut the connection. Now, let's press Shift A, go to texture and add a noise texture. Noise textures have two outputs, a factor and a color. And you'll see by the socket types that the color is outputting a color and factor is outputting a value because it's gray. Most textures output at least a factor and some output other things as well, like this one that outputs a color. If we connect a factor, a zero to one value, to a color input, it interprets that as a grayscale of black to white. And now we can change the settings of our noise to get the desired effect we're looking for. Combining and mixing these functions is where node trees really start to shine. So let's mix together this noise texture and this RGB node. We're gonna do that by hitting Shift A, going to color, and adding a mix RGB node. Now when we add a node, you'll see that it's connected to our mouse until we click. If we click just in open space, it will drop the node where we click. However, if we drop it on top of a connection, it will use the default sockets to connect that node through. So in this case, the noise texture has gone through color one, out color one to the base color. Now let's output the color from our RGB node to color two of this mix node. Just to keep things clean, I'm gonna rearrange these. Now we can use this list of color blending modes to decide how this noise texture and this color are going to be combined. We can also change the factor, how much this operation influences the result. There are many texture types we can add. However, one very useful texture type is an image texture. There are a couple of ways to get an image into your node tree. First, we can use this menu to add an image texture. From here, we would click open, and then use our file browser to select the image we want to load. We could then connect this to our base color. I'm gonna delete this and show you another way you could bring in an image. From a file browser window, you can navigate to the folder with your images and drag them from this window to your node editor. This will create the image texture node with that image already preloaded. You can now connect this 
to your objects. We can hook up the image's color anywhere, but for now let's just leave it connected to the base color, just as we did with the texture node. Of course we can mix this with other colors or textures using a mix node. I'm going to duplicate this node by clicking on it and hitting Shift D. I can now drop this anywhere. Setting this to mix, I can now mix my image with a color. All the image, or all the color, or halfway in between. I could also take the output of this node and use it here and get a combination of the two. Of course, I may want to alter my image before I use it. So hitting Shift A and going to Color, you'll see I have several nodes that you might recognize from applications like Photoshop or GIMP. Things like Brightness Contrast, where I can change the brightness of my image. We're gonna put this straight into the base color for a moment. I can change the brightness. I can change the contrast. I can change the hue and saturation. I could invert the image if I wanted to. You can add as many operations as you need to get the results you're looking for. When working with nodes, sometimes you'll want to have a way to see what the node is doing by turning it on and off really quickly. You can do this by muting a node or a group of nodes. For instance, if I wanted to mute all of these, so I just wanted to see what the image looked like, I could select these nodes and press M for mute. You'll see those nodes are grayed out, and the nodes that aren't grayed out will be the only things that are affecting that part of the tree. So here I can see what the image going through the brightness contrast node looks like until I get it looking the way I want. And then I can unmute these three with them selected. I can press M again, and now I see my result. Now as you play with nodes and work with them, you'll find that they can become very messy very quickly. One easy thing you can do is to collapse a node by pressing H or clicking the little triangle in the header bar of that node. So for instance, the principal BSDF node is very large. Hitting H collapses it down. I can select multiple nodes, hit H, and collapse them all. Selecting nodes and hitting H again will unhide them. Even still, all of our connections can get a bit unruly. Say we had a situation like this. Now things are starting to get a little messy. There are a few tools to help you with this. The reroute node is just a simple junction. You can add a reroute node by shift right click dragging over a connection. So if I have this one say, I hold down shift and right click drag over it. You'll see it adds a node socket right in the middle of my connection. Clicking on this, I can press G to grab it and I can move it around wherever I want. So in this case, I could add multiple and reroute this down here if I wanted to. One nice thing with reroute nodes is that they're a one in multiple out type of socket. So if I were to create a reroute node on this roughness line, but noticing that this color is going to the roughness, the specular, and the metallic, I could use this as my source here and here. This greatly cleans up that line and makes it a lot clearer what's going on. However, there's an even faster way to do that. Undoing this a few steps, if I shift right click drag over multiple connections that are all coming from the same source, this will happen automatically. So since all three of these were coming from the color output of this image, it connects them into one and then splits them off here. Now you don't have to worry about that happening if you happen to cut over connections from multiple different sockets. So for instance, if I cut through this connection and these three, this one will just get a reroute node and it will combine these three. Reroute nodes work in all of the different node type editors. Another layout tool that you can use in all node editors is the frame. Say we had this node set up. Selecting one or more nodes that go together, say this group here, 
and pressing Control J for join, that will create a frame around those particular nodes. Those nodes are now parented to the frame. We can move the nodes within the frame, but they won't come out. We can move the entire frame and they'll all move together. If you open the end panel by pressing N and select a frame, you'll notice that we can change the label. We can change the background color of the frame. We can change the label size if we need to. This will help you organize your nodes so that you can really see what's going on. If we want to remove a node from a frame, simply click on that node and hit Alt P to unparent that node from that frame. To put a single node into an existing frame, just drag it and drop it onto that frame. It's now parented to it. I'm gonna select all of these and hit Alt P to unparent, grab them and move them out of this frame and then delete this frame. The last organizational technique that I want to show you is grouping nodes. Grouping is a feature that allows you to combine multiple nodes into a single node. You do this by selecting the nodes that you want to combine and pressing Ctrl G. You'll notice you've come into a sub window that has an input and an output node and the nodes that you had selected. We can edit these nodes and add nodes to this group just like we would the normal node tree. If we hit tab, we'll return to our original node tree and see that that is now used as node group. With node group selected, I'll hit tab to go back into that node group. You'll see that the output of this last mix node is going to the output. Hitting tab again to go back, you'll see that this node group has only one output. Going back in, if I wanted to be able to access this alpha value, on my output, I could simply drag this alpha to the group output. Now when I return, you'll see I have an alpha output of this node group. And in the same way, if I still wanted to be able to control something like the scale of the noise, I can drag the scale of the noise to the input, and maybe the distortion. Now when I go out of this node group, you'll see that scale and distortion are now input values for this node group. Node groups are also duplicatable. So if I wanted to use this multiple times with different settings, I could do that. Now if you've grouped some nodes together and you want to ungroup them, it's very simple. Just select the node group and press Control alt g This will return your nodes to the way they were before. I hope this overview gives you a jumping off point for working with nodes in general. We're going to dive further into specifically building materials or the, using the compositor or the geometry nodes in other videos. So if you found this helpful, make sure to click like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.